the, the explanation of what the marathon is. Yeah, that could so be the people... actually your own Yeah, I'll start with that now. I'll tell you I, I'll tell you about I suppose how I how I came to 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 have it on my radar. So it's it was touted as well in Google when you type in it comes up as the world's toughest endurance event. Um I think that the Barkley marathons may be tougher. They're not longer, but I think Barkley's probably tougher now because most people don't finish Barkley, whereas a lot of people will finish the Marathon de Sable. But it's it's 260 kilometers over six days. Um, so you are in the Sahara Desert. So you're dropped in the middle of the desert. Um, the only thing you're provided with is a tent, which is pretty much just some canvas over your head at night. There's nothing at the front or back. And there's about eight people in a tent. Um, so it's a shared tent. So the first few days, there it's it's about 35 kilometers day one, day two, and day three. Yeah. But like the thing is, I go 35 kilometers. Sure, I can just go out and run that. No, that's not hard. But it's 30, between 30 and 40 degrees heat. Um, you get a lot of sandstorms. And the terrain varies on it some days. So it's very hilly some days and you get a lot of sand dunes where it's really soft sand. So you can't even run in it. You have to kind of almost walk or climb up some parts of it because it's it's not possible to run. Um, and then the long day, which you run overnight. So you run through the night is 86 kilometers. So day four and day five John. is, is a double marathon back to back and a little bit of change. I, I'm going to... Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I just wanna I just wanna say we have a few a few images here that I'm gonna pass through. The first yeah. one the first one the first just quick videos as we're gonna see. Um yeah, no, Paolo, you're yeah, so do you wanna run them images or will I will I talk as you're going? No, you, you can talk first and then and then we Okay, yeah. so yeah. yeah, so the the race was supposed to run on the third of April. Um and I started training around this time last year, so it's been pretty much twelve months, but I wasn't really into the heavy training until about the first week in September. So I, I had it planned that it was going to be a seven month block. Um, and I had my training kind of planned out week by week. And I was working off all of these kind of metrics that I needed to hit every week to build it up. So it's interesting because when you look at it at the start, you're going, man, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that. But like <laughs> by the time you get into January or February, it's like you do a marathon on Saturday, you get up Sunday morning, you go out and you do another marathon. And then on Monday, you go to work and you're like, fuck, I don't actually feel too bad today. So <laughs> it's it's amazing how fast that like what you deem as doable, it begins to stretch and, and like your horizons of this expand. So like generally during the week you do three runs they vary in length from 10 to 15k sometimes you'll do some hills during the week uh, you'll get two tough gym sessions in um a lot of strength stuff um mainly around your legs but because you carry everything on your back you got to do some upper body stuff as well so you have your pack on your back and you bring all of your food you bring all your medical supplies you bring your sleeping bag you bring your venom pumps Everything that you need to bring, you're carrying on your back. So your your back is your bag is about 10 kg at the start. And then you try, obviously, as you eat some food, it gets lighter as you go along. So you need to keep strength on as well as just the physical endurance side. Um, and then generally the way I work my program was Saturday and Sunday were two long days. So you had to try to do a really tough day and then be able to get up the next morning early and just go again and do another really tough day. So like the longest runs were like 60 or 70 K um, on a Saturday or Sunday. And you'd always have at least two to three hours the day before or the day after um, just to make sure that when you were absolutely and your, your feet were wrecked that you could get up the next day and just go again. So that's kind of, that is the, the psychological part because like when you get up in the middle of January and it's cold and it's wet and it's just, dark and you're going okay i've got to get out of bed at seven o'clock to eat food and then i got to get my pack on and get out into the rain again um, and just do another three four hours and it just every weekend there seemed to be a storm there was like four weekends in a row in ireland where there were storms yeah. like man i gotta go out and do this crap again in the middle of a storm so it's <laughs> yeah it, I, it, I, I, it, I can tell tough. you that, like
how many how many people is expected, John? Um, so this year is the 35th anniversary. So it's their first their 35th time running it. So they reckon they were going to have about a thousand people this year. A thousand Ooh. people. Yeah, yeah, that was that was that was the plan. Um, whether those numbers are going to decrease, but I think it was going to be their highest ever entry um, because it was kind of an anniversary race. But they they come from all over the world, um, every country imaginable. And they will range from former Olympic athletes to professional rugby players, Olympians. Um, yeah, you, you, you'll have them all in there. Um, so that they're, they're, they're every level of athlete. And you also have a couple of Moroccans who run this every year. They weigh about seven stone and they, I think they eat like two peanuts for the whole week. And they're just, yeah, fucking, yeah. they're gone, man. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's coming from different parts of the world. So you'll have a lot coming from America and Canada. You'll have them coming from New Zealand and Australia. So kind of over the course of 24 hours, people come in from everywhere and they're all coming on buses and they're coming in different ways. Um, and then everyone is there the day before. So the first day is the administration day. You have to have 2000 calories for every day minimum. So your everything, all your food has to be labeled. You have to show the calorie count and everything. You have to show all of your foods. So if you don't have 2000 calories for every day, they won't let you race. They'll just go, no, you can't run. Um, that's a minimum. You obviously want to get a little bit more because yeah. you're going to be burning a lot of calories. But the challenge then is everything you bring, you have to carry. So it can't be too heavy. So there's yeah. a balance between. So ideally what you're looking for is you're looking for stuff that doesn't weigh a lot, but it's got a shitload of calories in it. Mm -hmm. So like I'm in a supermarket looking at labels going uh, 120 calories, not nah, for children. Uh, 200, <laughs> nah, nah, 560. Oh shit. Yeah. I'll eat this. So <laughs> it's, yeah, you're, just, yeah. you're kind of going, okay, what can I carry? So there's a lot of freeze dry food that you just heat with hot water and then you can eat the meal. So my main meal each day is that there's a company called expedition foods. They do stuff. They actually do stuff for astronauts. Um, they'll do stuff for oh. people who are out at sea for long periods of time. They'll do it for soldiers. That's, so it's that, these, that little box that we see in the astronauts, like when, when we see the movies. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's all freeze dried. And all you do is you add water, you stir it up hot water if you can, and then you eat it. So there's like pastas and curries and different bits and pieces. So uh, each, each one of those is a thousand calories. So it's a small little pouch, but it's, there's a lot of calories in them. So that's good because it means that's pretty much half your supply for the day in one bag. Um, so you'll have one of them every day and then it's just making it up with other stuff then. So you'll obviously have your gels and your drinks. Um, and because it's quite hot, like I'll eat peanut butter sachets when I'm running here, mm -hmm. but like it's fine. It's hard enough to eat them here when you're doing long runs, but like in the desert, it's just so hot. There's no way you're going to be able to eat that stuff because it's just going to dry up in your mouth. Mm -hmm. So it's trying to find stuff that will be okay in the heat as well. So even right. some of the chocolate stuff that you have here, you can't bring that there. It's just going to melt. So it's to adapt the food stuff to that. So you have your food. You also have a venom pump. So obviously you're in a desert. So there's going to be snakes. Scorpions are the main two things that can get. So if you get bitten by any of them, some of them could kill you within 12 hours um, if you're left to your own devices. So you have to bring an anti-venom pump. So basically it, it's a pump that will suck the venom. Yeah, get okay. bitten. Um, you need a compass. In case you get lost, now there's your GPS tracked. Um, so even if it's very, very lost, they'll be able to locate you with the helicopter. Um, you need to bring a knife and you, what else is, is essential kit? Uh, that's pretty much the essential kit. The rest then you can just, you can bring whatever you want, but obviously you're going to have to carry it. So it's right. up to yourself. Um, and this one I think shows the first stages of the, the race. And we're back here uh, cool. after seeing these images. Yeah, we. Oh man, the visuals are the visuals are stunning. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Like the terrain you get to run across is phenomenal. It's it's the, like the landscapes that you can see in there. Um, yeah. Like, this is uh, a.